Hi everyone. Let's talk about games, shall we? Essen is supposed to be happening right now. Well, Essen Spiel, uh, and it is kind of digitally, but you know, this would normally be the time where we're talking about the most anticipated games that are coming out, and games still are coming out, and you can demo them and stuff on the Spiel Digital website. Tons of publishers are doing demos, and you can join discords and have chats and stuff. All sorts of things are happening, but here I'm going to talk about 15, 15, 15 games that uh, I am most excited for uh, that are going to be released around this time. So it's not technically most anticipated of Essen, but for all intents and purposes, it is. So before we get started, uh, I'll say if you're new to my channel, I mainly play two player and solo and don't really like any uh, aggressiveness in our games, mainly a Euro gamer, like all of that kind of uh, training in the Mediterranean, QB stuff. Can't say the word Mediterranean though, apparently. So uh, things, kind of honorable mentions before we start the list. And these are things that I have already covered. Uh, so they are already playthroughs on the channel or are just about to be. Uh, so you can check those out. I'll put some links in the description. Eh? I, I always say I'm going to do that and forget to do it, but I'll remember this time, I promise. Uh, so already covered for Essen releases are Praga Caput Regni, the new game from Vladimir Succi, designer of Shipyard and Underwater Cities and all sorts of amazing games. Uh, it's an absolutely fantastic uh, meaty Euro, uh, potentially uh, the best game of the year, certainly one of them. Uh, Castles of Tuscany from Stefan Feld, kind of the uh, sequel to uh, The Castles of Burgundy, although it is a much faster, lighter game. Uh, still, you know, trying to fill your boards with uh, different types of hexes and getting bonuses when you lay those hexes down. Uh, also from Steffenfeld, Bonfire. Wasn't so hot on that one. <laughs> See the video as why. Uh, Twa Dice uh, is a uh, roll and write version of Twa, but kind of in theme, more than mechanics. Uh, you know, you're not buying dice from other players and all that sort of stuff, but you are trying to fend off events and uh, the characters from Twa, the setting is there more than, it's It's more a conventional roll and write with uh, some twists of its own, but check out the playthrough, you can play along with that one. And uh, finally, Calico is out now, or just about to be. Tile laying game where you are making a quilt for to attract certain kinds of cats to uh, sleep on. I did a playthrough of this for its original Kickstarter, and hopefully I will get a chance to do another playthrough very soon, because now it's out, I don't put uh, prototypes and kickstarters and things on my uh, top lists of the year but uh, i've got a i've got a good feeling about calico uh, for this year so oh and finally <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't put expansions on this but one honorable mention for an expansion is uh, the magnificent snow should it be pronounced it or snow Maybe that's more northern than <laughs> trying to uh, pronounce the the uh, with a slash through it, uh, which is an expansion for the magnificent one of the best games of last year did a playthrough for that last lesson uh, and it's an expansion with more stuff, uh, new cards, new tiles, uh, a new performer, and it can support five players now, and a new uh, master board, which can give everyone a special action each round. Uh, that is a little bit delayed, but that should be coming, and there'll be a video for that when it comes out. Okay, there's, there's timestamps for all of this stuff, you know, if you're one of those people who are like, oh, why hasn't he gotten to the list yet? The timestamps are all there, and the whole, li the whole video is me talking, so... Yeah, don't worry about it. So number 15 is Anno 1800. This is designed by long, long time designer Martin Wallace, who has designed such, well, a massive list of things, but among things I've played, uh, Brass, Railways of the World, London, some fantastic games. Uh, and uh, I really love RTS PC games, which Anno 1800 is one. I've never played one of the Anno series. I've always wanted to, which is basically the same thing, isn't it? But hey, I'll get, maybe I'll be playing it in cardboard first. Uh, so I like that you know, in a lot of these you know, 4X adaptations, there's of course that exterminate part where you are trying to finish off the other players. And uh, from what I understand, Anno is more of a city building thing. So it doesn't seem from you know looking through the rules that there's that much negative interaction. From looking through the forum post, it seems like uh, there is more chance to be frozen out of stuff at higher player counts. So with us uh, likely playing it at two, that's uh, going to be a better thing. It feels like more of a race at two players, apparently. And uh, the one thing is that there's, there's trading amongst the players and... That very rarely works for us at two players, but hey, we'll see how uh, Anno handles it. I'm looking forward to finding out. That's uh, Anno 1800. 14 is Kadama Forest. Now, I really loved Kadama. It was a card game where we were making uh, these trees, basically. <laughs> we were laying the cards along the branches to extend them along and get certain elements that would score us a load of points. Uh, and it had uh, various permutations. So, Kokoro, which was an adaptation of a fantastic roll and write game called Avenue. 
Uh, but uh, Kodama Forest is continuing on with that theme, but it is now a polyomino tile laying game. Uh, I love those anyway. And it's also got this element of, you know, cooperation kind of. It's not a cooperative game, but it's cooperating with your neighbor. Uh, so in something like you know, Between Two Cities or Between Two Castles of Mad King Ludwig, I really enjoyed it there as well. Uh, about uh, you, know, you want to cooperate with your neighbor, but you still want to end up on top. So you, know, you need to balance out how you're going to do it. So really excited to see how that uh, comes through in Kadama Forest. 13 is Viscounts of the West Kingdom, which is the third in you know, the West Kingdom trilogy. Uh, and it's mainly here because I feel like I have uh, I've missed out. I've overlooked uh, pretty much everything from Shem Phillips until I tried uh, Paladins of the West Kingdom a couple of months ago. Uh, and uh, I've played I've only played it solo, but I was really blown away by the, the game itself. I really, really enjoyed and uh, I just think it's a really interesting way of handling solo, of giving a solo player you know, certain bonuses to certain actions based on what the you know end game scoring things that are that are out on the board. It worked really, really well. It's one that I haven't uh, managed to do a playthrough for yet, but hopefully one day. But Viscounts kind of completes this trilogy. I know with uh, I think we played Raiders of the North Sea, Is that the first one of the first trilogy. We played that a long, long time ago, and there's a bit too much uh, conflict in it for us, uh, but. I would really like to try this uh, as a trilogy. Now, maybe I'm only going to play it solo because I remember with Architects, there was something where you could take other players' work as prisoner and stuff like that. But yeah, as a, as a trilogy, I'd really like to try it out, especially because I know that North Sea got a kind of expansion where you could play all of the things together. And I'd be really keen on trying that with uh, the West Kingdom uh, trilogy as well. So really, really keen to get a hold of Viscounts. Number 12 is Paleo. And this is here mainly because it's, uh, well, number one, it's from publisher Hans M. Gluck, which always have something, you know, at the very least very interesting, but often uh, very, very fantastic games. Uh, as their yearly Essen releases, you know, in the past there have been you know, heavy hitters like Russian Railroads and First Class and... I will think of a non-train based game one day. Uh, but yeah, they have done some fantastic Euro games. And this, so it's got that kind of pedigree behind it before. Uh, it's designed by Peter Rustemeyer. I haven't played a game by him before, but hey, looking forward to it. Uh, but the other kind of extra thing standing out to me is that it's a cooperative game. And I can't recall a cooperative game coming from uh, Hands and Gluck before, but it's, uh, it's a kind of prehistoric game. We have workers that have health. We're going to these places. We don't quite know what we're going to find there. We I'm probably going to find uh, some you know, animals that aren't happy with us trespassing on their territory, but we're trying to uh, we're trying to survive and prosper and stuff. But yeah, mainly that uh, cooperative slant. Really, really uh, love cooperative games, and I'm looking forward to seeing what can come from Hans and Gluck in that area. Number eleven is Tawan Tinsuyu. Close. I'm not pronouncing it wrong. I'm just not pronouncing it the same way you do. That's the new strategy for <laughs> sidestepping that kind of thing. So this is. Uh, the, the second kind of uh, heavier board and dice release of this year, we had Tekenyu, which I did a playthrough for last month. And, oh, that should be mentioned at the start of the video, Tekenyu. <laughs> but uh, this is designed, that was designed with uh, Danielle Tashini, along with David Tortzi. And this is David on his own. Uh, and here we are, it's, it's a worker placement game where it's based around this kind of, this temple at the, the, the top of a great big hill. And all of the worker placement spots are at various tiers on this hill. And so the cost of your worker placement is based on how far away the space is from your high priest, which starts out on the, the top of the hill and will gradually work their way down. So it's about balancing what you need and how much you can pay for it. And it's got you know various tracks you want to go up, various buildings you want to construct for production, or they'll give you various abilities throughout the game. Lots of uh, Euroy goodness, but yes, I, I trust... David with his designs and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what he's come up with all on his lonesome on this one. Not that he hasn't designed games on his own before, he's designed some amazing ones. Try Kitchen Rush. I'm always trying to get people to pl play more Kitchen Rush, but there's an acrony and all of the heavier ones, but hey, Kitchen Rush. 10 is Whistle Mountain. Uh, so I really enjoyed Whistle Stop a couple of years ago. I did a playthrough for that from uh, designer Scott Caputo and he has teamed up now with Luke Laurie who designed Manhattan Project Energy Empire, an absolutely fantastic game. Uh, was it 2017 that came out? It was, it was one of the best games the year that it came out. I remember, of course I remember all of these things. It's the expansion. There was an expansion to it coming out at some point, it's just occurred to me. Uh, but also Dwellings of Eldervale, which I haven't played and I thought would probably be too mean for us, but now that it's arriving, it's one of those shiny, beautiful Kickstarters that 
you're like, well, well, now I really want to try it. And it's got solo. Maybe I'll get a chance to one day. But uh, yes, Scott and Luke have teamed up for Whistle Mountain, whereas Whistle Stop was about trains and uh, getting routes to get goods and stuff. Uh, Whistle Mountain, I was about to say Whistle Stop again, Whistle Mountain is about airships. And so we have this, uh, this great big grid where we are trying to build things and send our airships. And so on your turn, you can put your airships out onto this main board. You can put them into slots around the board that will get you new ones or upgrade uh, airships that you've got. You can put scaffolding on this grid and there is, you know, a scoring element for trying to get, you can, you can place workers as well based on the height of this scaffolding and you'll get points for how high those workers are uh, by the end of the game. But, you know, Whistle Stop was full of uh, just different, just, just variability in the, the different routes that could come out and the different uh, buildings that were available, the different destinations that you could get stuff from. And it was full of a load of uh, different player powers. And it seems this way with all of the, the buildings and things that are uh, in Whistle Mountain. I'm really, really looking forward to it. And especially uh, the, the meeting of minds of uh, Scott Caputo and Luke Lorick. So that's uh, Whistle Mountain. Number nine is, staying with trains, Switch and Signal, which is from Cosmos Games and it's designed by David Thompson, who I haven't played his designs personally, but War Chest and the Undaunted series have been you know, incredibly well regarded from uh, what I see, from what I hear on the grapevine. And uh, yeah, they, they seem too fighty for us personally, but yes, I, I have, I'm confident in uh, what people have said. And so this, it's, it's a train game. There's routes, there's trains, they're getting in the way of each other, all that normal stuff. But this is a cooperative game, which is, you know, I've already mentioned cooperative is kind of a, a, a red flag, but a good, a good one. A green flag? Is that what gets people's attentions? I don't know. But yes, it, it gets my attention that that's, that's a, a different thing anyway from rather than you know competing and getting in each other's way and trying to get these routes first and stuff, those routes seem like established and the trains are going to get in the way of each other and stuff. And so it's going to be our job to try and make sure they get there on time and don't get in each other's way. And so I'm, I'm, really, I'm really excited about that twist you know, on, on the kind of general cutthroat uh, train game. Not that all of them are cutthroat, but things that we enjoy more have been things like Railways of the World and Imperial uh, from this year as well. So really looking forward to seeing how that uh, comes through cooperatively. Haven't seen much about it because I, as far as I know, at the time of making this video, I could only find German rules for it. Uh, so it's uh, just going off the, the description more than anything. Uh, but I'm really, really excited to find out more about Switch and Signal. Number eight is Cubitos. Cubitos? From uh, John D. Clare, designer of you know, Mystic Veil and uh, oh, Edge of Darkness, they're, they're the other side of me. That's nice framing, isn't it? It could always be planned. And it's from AEG, the publisher of uh, both of those as well. Uh, and so breaking from the theme of uh, kind of these uh, Euro games, although this, it's not entirely been that, but as someone who often would rather fewer dice and less luck, this is an entirely dice-based push your luck game. <laughs> but I'm really, uh, I'm really excited about it, uh, where it, it's a race game, basically. So historically that means that uh, Rach, who I play most of my games with, is gonna beat me while I'm still trying to work out some great big engine. Rach is running past the finish line often in race games. But uh, this this is uh, a race game where we've got our main dude on the, on the map. There are two different maps included, I think. And you have a load of dice. You'll roll all of these dice. You will get to re-roll until you've got three faces of them. Uh, and uh, the faces will have various effects, but you know, feet will move you along uh, the, the racetrack. And uh, so once you've got those three faces, you can either accept it or you can re-roll. And so if you get more dice faces, brilliant. But if you, of the dice that you re-roll, if you don't roll anything new, you bust and don't get anything that turn. But you get to move along this fan track. And the more you move along that track, the more dice you'll get to draw on your turn. So there, there is a kind of a, a, a balancing of these things. It's not a complete waste of a turn doing that. But as well as that, there are all of these colored dice that, you know, in a kind of uh, tiny village, tiny towns kind of way, <laughs> villages is the expansion for it. In a tiny towns kind of way, there are, you know, different colors of dice or say automobiles did this as well with its different colors of cubes that the, the dice aren't necessarily defined by just uh, what the faces are on the dice. They can change based on the game. So there are there are many colors of dice and they will correspond to a card randomly drawn for that game, which will define what that die does, what the faces on it do this game. And there are all sorts of ones like one-off abilities that are great early on, 
uh, and you know, there, there are ones that help you not bust. There are red dice that are not necessarily combat, but there is a majority. Whoever's got the most of a certain thing will uh, get the. It will be the only player that turn to get the ability on the card, and will also get to roll all of their dice. Whereas usually there's a there's a limit to how many you can roll. So yeah, very very variable, and uh, we'll, we'll see how I get on with uh, my usual. Uh, grumbling and mumbling over luck and stuff. If it's an entirely pushy luck based game, I'm usually okay with it. But yeah, I, I'm very excited about Cubitos. Whoops, I forgot to mention, I'm doing it now, that <laughs> I got pretty much all of my information about Cubitos uh, from the Show Me How to Win channel, uh, who did a fantastic interview with Todd Rowland going through the game and stuff. Check it out. Number seven is Finishing Time from Freedom and Freeze, and published by 2F Games. And uh, this is a worker placement game with kind of kind of the opposite of, uh, of worker placement game thematically anyway, in that uh, you're, you are placing workers to spend their free time. You know, they, they work all day and how are they going to spend their time after work? Are they going to work more and earn more money to be able to do stuff but uh, take on stress or are they going to uh, try and do leisure activities? You are basically trying to get the most satisfied people that is how you that's how your points are represented that's how you win the game and uh, at the at the end of the round bringing back your workers is actually sending them to work i like that little uh, twist on the theme I, I really like the theme as well exploring the kind of general work things of uh, people just scrabbling to find time in between work to actually get things done and uh, yeah that balance between uh, money and stress and stuff i really like it thematically uh, freedom and free obviously a, a massively established uh, designer. I think I may have only done a playthrough for his game Futuropia from a couple of years ago, but, you know, uh, Power Grid, Fast Slots, he's got his um, Fable series where you uh, learn the games as you go on. Uh, yeah, Fable Fruit was one of those, wasn't it? Yeah, where they can... Uh... We played Flea, which is a race game where you the game expands as you play through this deck and it teaches you the games as you go along. I'm sure he's got really, really heavy hitting games that I'm not mentioning there, but uh, yeah, maybe haven't played a load of them. I really want to play Copycat. I've always wanted to play that, but I've never uh, seen a copy of that. But yes, finishing time, Freedom and Freeze. Love the theme. I'm sure it is going to be excellent from Freedom and can't wait to try it. Number six is Escape Curse of the Temple, the roll and write game. So <laughs> Escape Curse of the Temple is... Uh, a game from many years ago now, a, a cooperative uh, real-time dice game where there is a soundtrack playing, we are trying to discover new tiles in this temple and satisfy conditions to get all of these crystals. And the main way that we do this is frantically, constantly rolling our dice until we get the faces that we need, but certain faces will freeze those dice and we need other players to come help uh, unfreeze them uh, so that we don't just get stuck in place, not being able to roll anything. Uh, an absolutely fantastic co-op game that I can't actually remember now it had a spin-off um the escape zombie city as well i can't really remember why we stopped playing it. I, th I think rage got bored of it uh, which is fair enough we did play it a lot <laughs> at the time uh, but i love roll and write games as well and so the the, the marriage of the two <laughs> i'm really excited to see what they come up with i imagine uh, and either even faster playing uh, version of it. It seems very variable. It's got different uh, layout sheets for the temple map and stuff. Really, really excited about it. And as well, I'm kind of crowbarring in a couple of extra games in this entry, uh, in the, <laughs> the Queen Games entry, that uh, there are fresco... These, they're all Kickstarters that I'd uh, forgotten until I looked all of this stuff up. Uh, there are versions of Fresco. Fresco, a fantastic uh, worker placement game where we are trying to complete this. This Fresco, this uh, great big uh, painting kind of, you know, it's a competitive game where we have this uh, kind of collaborative thing going on. Uh, you can see a playthrough for the board game on the channel, but there are card game, there's a card game version coming out and a roll and write version. And yeah, really, really excited to see what that's coming out. But the one that uh, made the top 15 is Escape Roll and Write. Really, really excited to get back into the temple and see how it differs from the original game. Number five is Super Skill Pinball 4K uh, from WizKids and designed by Jeff Engelstein. And this is basically Pinball the Roll and Write game. I have only seen you know, one of the boards, one of the tables, there we go, <laughs> being played. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, a Roll and Write where you have 
uh, a ball represented on your sheet. You've got uh, three balls if you uh, lose some, uh, but your your ball goes through different zones of the sheet. So we'll start out at the top and then has to work its way down each turn, or you, you can just jump to the bottom if there's something you really want. Uh, and then we'll make it to the flippers and hopefully you'll be able to use certain numbers to go back up and keep going through things. In the, the one that I saw, the, the corner ball, uh, it had you know bumpers that if you if you get the right numbers you can keep cycling between them getting points each time until you don't get the right number and then you have to go down there were things where if you get sets of these yellow or reds you can get bonuses like you can activate multiple so you've got two different dice so you can activate two things each turn and uh, all of your points are doubled while both of the balls are in play uh, you could get things that uh, reset the bumpers you know that's so you've got more chance of uh, of catching your, your balls in the flippers in case the right numbers don't come out uh, you've got uh, bits in there where you will lose the ball but you'll get points based on how many times you used a certain flipper Just really really cool stuff and it looks like it's full of combos and yeah really like <laughs> i've heard this going into it that uh, really uh, gets the the pinball theme across and I, I was excited about that but thought well well how but uh yeah seeing it in action you can you can i think you can still print and play it I, I haven't but yeah it was made available during the the lockdown I feel like you can uh, you can print it out and try it yourself. And there are various channels that uh, that have done uh, playthroughs for it. I think it's out in America already. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, yeah, Paul Grogan did a playthrough for it as well. Uh, but yeah, I'm really, really excited about this, especially now I've seen it in action. Uh, Super Skill Pinball looks like a really exciting roll and write game. Number four is Pandemic Legacy Season Zero. And honestly, I thought this would be higher, but here, this is where it's ended up. Uh, so Pandemic Legacy, I, I absolutely loved season one it's probably still the best kind of experience we've had in board games playing through that uh, first season was especially because it was a new thing and i believe the first legacy thing we had ever tried uh, so exciting so different full of twists and turns and yeah it was just absolutely sublime and then uh, season two tried a lot of different things. I think some of them worked better than others. Overall, though, it was a fantastic experience. Still didn't reach those heights of season one, but an element of that is that it wasn't, it's not the first time anymore. Uh, but season zero is here after, is it three years since season two now? Uh, and all I really know is it's a prequel, obviously, season zero. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's, it's set in the past. It's got this kind of Soviet theme. I don't know anything else about it. I imagine there isn't that much to know unless you want to spoil the legacy stuff for it i just know based off the the pedigree of those massively enjoyable experiences i'm really excited to see what is coming in season zero maybe it's just not as excited about it because i don't know when we're gonna be uh, be able to play it but hopefully sooner rather than later i'm really keen to see what is new with uh, with season zero because without spoiling too much season two gave you kind of more opportunities to take completely different avenues. Season one was more that you would have a, a, a similar basic experience, but depending on you know how you handle the world, it would shake off really differently. Oh, this isn't working talking about it vaguely, is it? Uh, season two, yeah, you, you, could, you could choose your own path a lot more in uh, season two, and that's had pros and cons to it. So I'm looking forward to seeing how they changed it for season zero. Basically, pandemic good, want to see more. Number three is Winter Kingdom from Donald X. Vaccarino and published by Queen Games. That's the millionth mention on this list. Uh, so Winter Kingdom, I'm just excited by any new designs from Donald X. Vaccarino. Okay. Designer of Dominion, how could you not? Uh, but uh, this is basically uh, not, not a reskin, but a kind of re-implementation of Kingdom Builder. It's, from what I've seen described, it's kind of Kingdom Builder with an expansion built in. Uh, and yeah, Kingdom Builder is an absolutely fantastic game that, in my experience anyway, is much maligned and uh, yeah, underappreciated. Uh, because the, the, the same basic thing is there, that you have a terrain card. You need to put down some of your houses on this type of terrain. And once you have built in this terrain, you have to build adjacent to it. Uh, so yeah, incredibly restrictive. You don't get a hand of cards to pick from and uh, try and strategize that way. You draw a random card each turn and you need to put houses on it. And yeah, that I can I can kind of see where people have ended up you know, not liking that system. But from that 
a really tough restriction. All of it is down to you and the other players, basically. It's down to you to put yourself in a position where you have place to give yourself more options. You have not kind of fenced yourself in and uh, caused it so that drawing a card is absolutely terrible for you. Sometimes that's just going to happen, but... Yeah, there are ways around you. You are in control of uh, of a lot of your own destiny, even though you only get to just draw that card and do what it says. It's not uh, the terrible thing that I think that is uh, it's put out to be sometimes. And you know, Kingdom Builder at this point, tons of expansions, tons of different abilities around the board, different scoring opportunities. That uh, seems to be true in Winter Kingdom as well, that it's got you know the, the random map setup, the random scoring. Uh, there's also a twist card that's going to change uh, the rules of that particular game. And everyone is going to have ability cards as well that they will be able to play over the course of the game, as well as the restriction of just the, the, the one territory card that you have got. So yeah, just really excited to see more of that uh, that game that I love. Hopefully it will, uh, you know, maybe turn some heads, change some minds of people that uh, weren't so keen on Kingdom Builder or maybe were put off by it, by uh, people that really didn't like it. And yeah, hopefully, it's, hopefully it hasn't changed too much to accommodate those people because I think they were wrong. Kingdom Builder, fantastic, and hopefully Winter Kingdom is going to be as well. Number two is Under Falling Skies, published by CG and designed by Thomas Ullier. And this is a... What's a solo game? It's a one plus players game. So it's a it's a solo game, but can easily just be played cooperatively. You know, you're all sharing the decision of what to do in this game. So basically, aliens are coming. <laughs> we need to be worried. It's an Independence Day style scenario. They are coming to attack. They aren't our friends and we need to stop them. And so we have this kind of not exactly Space Invaders kind of board. Well, it is kind of. There are aliens coming down here and there are various spaces on in the sky that will, you know, move the spaceships to different columns or make them move further. Uh, there will be a lot of explosions out on the board as well. Uh, so the main mechanic is we roll a load of dice and we are going to put those dice into worker placement spots. But the number on the die that you put in a spot is going to move any spaceships in that column that many spaces down. So you know which rooms you want to activate and you know how the aliens are going to move. You know, if they land on an arrow, they're going to move into a different uh, column or something like that. And you, so you don't want them to reach the city. That's going to be bad. You're going to take damage for that. You want to kind of line them up on these explosion spaces because if they are sitting on there, when you activate your, you know, big bomb room, that is going to blow up any spaceships that are waiting on those spaces. And you can get robots that will kind of automatically activate certain uh, spaces, but they will wind down as things go on. You need to earn energy to be able to activate a load of these buildings. And yeah, the, the basic game, you can see me on the, the Gaming Rules channel. I did a, a live playthrough with uh, Russ from uh, Chits and Giggles. Make sure you say that right in the video. Uh, but, uh, and Paul kind of talked us through it. He had the copy and we were watching and uh, telling him what to do. So you can check that out already. There will be playthroughs coming up uh, on here as well. I just got it, actually. Just arrived today. <laughs> but uh, yes, all of that aside, it, I've, so I've, I've played it once, basically, by proxy. And uh, I absolutely loved it. Really excited to get a hold of it myself. Uh, but as well as all of this stuff, the, the base game that we played, I think we played the basic difficulty. I think we did. Uh, but there is also a, a ton of variability in the, the difficulty. You know, the, these skyboards that you have, uh, you have the, the abilities, the locations that are out there will change based on the different boards that you've got out. And there is a campaign mode to play as well, where as you are getting used to the game, things will change. It will uh, it will bend the rules. It will make things tougher for you by uh, changing these boards over. And it's got uh, some kind of nice progression system as well. But yes, stuff will be coming. Really, really excited to dig into Under Falling Skies and that will be happening uh, sooner rather than later. And finally, number one, the thing I'm most excited about from this batch of Essen releases is, uh, I've even made notes in my friend's notebook. Uh, it is Halatau uh, by Uwe Rosenberg. I absolutely love Uwe Rosenberg games. Not every single one, but they are you know, how I was really how I was introduced to you know, medium weight and sometimes heavier uh, Euro games. You know, Agricola was one of the first games that I got just because it was so highly rated on Board Game Geek at the time. It was the number two game, I think. Uh, but yeah, so many 
fantastic, fantastic designs from Uwe, from, you know, Makata to Agricola, and uh, Caverna's great as well, it's just not as good as Agricola. Uh, you know, Glass Road, uh, Nusfjord, I think was his last uh, kind of non polyomino release, uh, but uh, it, this is his first kind of big, heavy Euro, I think, since uh, A Feast for Odin, which was a polyomino game, but it's, it's a lot more than that. Uh, so yeah, you can see a couple of playthroughs for Feast for Odin and its expansion, and tons of Uwe Rosenberg games that I just mentioned on the channel already. So I think it's the first kind of big meaty hero since uh, 2016, so in, in four years. There have been games since then. Well, Uwe games, I mean. There of course have been games in those last four years. But uh, yeah, I, I'm really excited for that because I really love a kind of big game like that to dig into, to, to sink your teeth into. And this looks like it doesn't disappoint. So obviously, you know, the weight rating on Board Game Geek is, you know, sometimes nebulous anyway. It's all user defined, but uh, the game isn't even out yet. So I imagine the the sample size is very very limited. But it uh, it seems like it's going to be a uh, a fairly uh, heavy game. So you're the chief of a small village. You know, it's it's a lot like a lot of Euro games that you like. If you just read the description out, then just in general, I think cool. I'm excited, but it doesn't sound any different to any other Euro game. And so, you know, you're the chief of a small village, you need to provide craftsmen with goods, and uh, you will be doing this by uh, planting crops and breeding sheep and stuff like that. And uh, you have these a limited number of bonus cards that can be used in a lot of different ways. Some can only be used in certain phases. Some have got requirements that might be on the, the communal action board. It's a worker placement game. Uh, and uh, they might be, you know, restrictions on you they want requirements of you to have certain numbers of certain resources and you will play them and they'll give you various effects some might be permanent bonuses but you've got a very small pool of those to choose from and you can play them all at once if you want to and you're able to you get you get back one each round i believe uh, so you are giving local craftsmen goods that they require they'll require more and more goods as the game goes on but you have these craftsman cards basically i know that it's just going to be the box cover here and you would like to see more wait till I have the game, then you'll see it in video form. Uh, you have these craftsman cards, and if you give them what they need, uh, some you know, need, want you to give more of, of this good than this good, or they will want specific goods. And when you satisfy them, they move along this grid, basically. And as soon as you have moved every craftsman one space, your great big village hall tile will slide to fill in that gap, and in sliding, it will uncover new things like new workers and it will show you the village that you're building and stuff uh, so you can breed sheep to, and you decide do you want to get uh, milk from them which you can just get every round uh, or do you want to do more nefarious things uh, to get meat oh and you can get wool from them as well and there is a thing of you know time passes the relentless march of time goes on and so you can only keep them for a few rounds so you need to do something with them before they you know pass on of, uh, of natural causes you sow crops and you know, agricola styling you uh, you sow a crop you get more back i think in in Halatau it works that you you sow a crop and you get five of it back at first but then when you sow in that field again you're only gonna get four back and it's gonna get less and less efficient until you lay your fields fallow something that i vaguely <laughs> the, the you know, few farming things that people vaguely know about uh, yeah you lay it fallow for a round and then next time you use it it's back to full efficiency again uh, and uh, yeah, it's worker placement where the worker placement spots are full of your workers are these cubes, and it's full of spaces for these cubes where it does the it does the cool worker placement thing where it's not just that you put a worker there and no one else can go there this round. It means that if someone else wants to go there, they're gonna pay more and more workers to do that same action. But it uh, teases that I haven't you know delved into the entire rulebook thoroughly. I've done a, a, a very efficient scan of it, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, you. You put these cubes on and they don't necessarily just clear off each round, which is uh, what I'd expect from uh, that mechanic. So yeah, it's it's going to be, it's going to potentially get very, very expensive to keep repeating these actions, especially if uh, a few people are going to keep repeating them all the time. Uh, and I've talked about the cards and stuff. Yeah, it's it's Uwe stuff. <laughs> really, really excited to see more. I really, really hope that uh, I'm into it, basically. I'm really excited from just what I've seen about it. It goes for make basically all of these games. Please come out soon. You know, if uh, the the one of the many advantages of uh, of Essen being there is that the games would be there as well, and you would know uh, when to get hold of them. I know, you know a lot of people, probably the majority of people, 
wouldn't be at Essen and so would be in a similar position. So yeah, there's, there's this privilege kicking in there, isn't there? But yes, please come out soon so I can try all of these things. Some of them are on the way or are here already. You know, a, a few of them like Under Falling Skies and stuff. And we'll be coming very, very soon. The Magnificent Snow is coming up. Uh, Lost Ruins of Arnak, which uh, should have been an honourable mention as well. The other game from CG, that'll be coming very soon. Uh, and others are hopefully on the way. But as for the rest of them, come out in retail soon, please, in the UK and other places in the world. But yeah, UK, eh? And yeah, I'm just uh, really, really pumped, especially now uh, I've uh, read more about some of these games to make this list. So there we go. There are my 15 but more really, games that I'm most excited about for this winter, autumn-y, wintery period. Uh, what are yours? What haven't I mentioned that is going to be the heavy hitter of the year? What's going to be your favourite for it, do you reckon? Uh, and if you've played any of these, are they good? Should I be excited about them? Let me know, eh? Uh, if you'd like to see more from me, you can subscribe and stuff, you can like. It genuinely helps appease the, the cold-hearted, indifferent uh, algorithm of, uh, of YouTube and you can uh, help me keep making more playthroughs and this kind of video at uh, patreon.com forward slash slicker drips. Thank you very much for watching this one though. If you'd like to see playthroughs, there's only over 400 on the channel. I was going to say only 400, but try and find one that you like. <laughs> yeah, there, there are over 400 at the moment and more coming all the time. Thank you very much for watching this though and I'll see you for the next game. Bye everyone.